Welcome, new and returning, to Saviors RPG, uh, where we will keep going on our little side quest, uh, our short pirate adventure called the Tales from the Scuffed Gurney, with me as the GM, Amy Ross, and uh, our great adventuring party. Uh, last week, we had bit of a strange encounter with a ghostly figure uh, that asked the party for help seemingly being shredded in his ghostly form and dragged down into the depths of the ocean he left them with a clue where to find him and they followed and uh, once they reach their des the destination uh, he appeared once again uh, to tell them that the uh, below the surface where where they were uh, was uh, something uh, that was uh, destroying him, and uh, he gave them some uh, uh, what is it now again? It's a spell that allows them to breathe on the water. That water breathing. Oh yes, exactly that spell. Um, sorry, guys, a bit out of it today. Um, breathing of water. Yes. Uh, and they went below the sur surface and have now encountered uh, what seems to be a low lackey of something that lives and thrives inside a huge cave. And the uh, they slayed this creature, which turned out to be a uh, Shaoguin, uh, with some strange black vertigos veins coming out of its body. Uh, and it did not look like anything uh, the party members have seen if they had encountered these creatures before. And... Uh, uh, the episode finished up with them tossing the lifeless body of this creature uh, just in front of the cave. And that is where we will pick up today. So, will the captain go ahead and introduce himself and his character? Yes, uh, I am Terror, or Terrorblaze, and I play Trittrian Applegold, and he's a halfling, arcane trickster. Uh, yeah, he's he's a weird little creature who enjoys the adventure uh, with a mysterious past. No, commonly called Tear. Very good. And our canon expert, would you please go ahead and introduce yourself and your character? Hello, my name is Jack. Uh, I am playing the role of Joe the Goblin this evening. Um, Joe is a ranger, a monster slayer archetype, and is um, just here to, here to kill some monsters. Excellent. And last but absolutely not least, uh, the chef, would you please go ahead and introduce yourself and your character? Yeah, I... <clears throat> I'm Chaka Panda, Oberon Obara, the, uh, the uh, sexy barbarian who is cooking all of the tasty foods and uh, excited to try and find some rare meats to make tasty to treats. Yay! Wonderful. So, with that out of the way, let's begin. So, the dead. The lifeless body of the Shaogun lands just outside the cave. And, uh, oh, sorry. And you can see some movement uh, in the shadows as a bigger uh, four-armed version of this creature comes out and takes a look around. 
Yeah, what did you say it came out? You said a big four forearms? Yes. A bigger version of this creature with oh, four arms. Geez. That's way that's double the amount of arms. Oh, we found the mommy. Uh, he does not look too happy and he drags the body of this underling of his with him into the cave. Oh, the daddy, I'm sorry. So, how do you wish to proceed from here? Uh, do we know that the ghost is in the cave? You can see um, a black smoke coming out from this cave. Or rather, it's actually the... Uh, there is a cloud above you. I think I said this last week. I'm not sure that I yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah, but parts of it are being sucked into this more like uh, cave structure. Fun. Yeah, I, I just Joe hope. Going there. Yeah, I say Joe goes in there. Yep, yep, <laughs> all aboard for Joe. Uh, um, like, but the, the the creature's just taking the smaller creature into the cave. He's just yes. taking the corpse with him. Yes, he just right. dragged it back with. Yeah, let's see. Cool. Yeah, Joe Joe's going to go into the cave stealthily. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll stealth. Eleven. Okay. So As you proceed into the cave, um, you it, it's very dark at the beginning. But then you start, start to see this crystal-like dots up in the ceiling, uh, shedding a bright, uh, like luminescent purple sh uh, color. And it's filling up the cave with light, so you're eyes do not have to adapt to the darkness anymore. Nice. Uh, um, yeah, I kind of peek in the mouth of the cave, and then I'll just wave wave my companions forward, because so far right, it's I'll safe. I'll swing forward towards Joe, carefully, slowly, keeping an eye out, actively searching. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and roll a perception. And I begin my Mission Impossible 5 intro into the cave. 18. 18. So, um, Terror, what about you? For the stealth? Well, are you going the, into what the are cave? You... Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I guess I'm going in as well. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, look. That'll put me at 24. 24. So, uh, what happens is, um, I assume, Tara, that you will take a more um, diverted route. You will stray off from a bit from the other two with your role. Yes, yeah. you seem to be disappearing among the protruding rocks uh, that comes out of the sand. Yes. And Oberon, as soon as you also get to see these lights inside that shines up this seemingly um, spherical shape uh, room that is inside, uh, you get a glimpse of something hiding behind uh, a rock up on a small um, plateau, you could say. And uh, it's watching you. And you can tell that it's one of these smaller creatures that you took care of just outside. Okay, what I'd I like to um, approach it, skimming along the wall, trying to get at least half cover, something like that. Partial cover? Yeah, there are 
plenty of rocks and other um, natural covers that you can find in here. Uh, but what you also notice is that this stream of black smoke that comes into this cave is going into this, um, like a singularity is being formed just in front of a bigger rock. And on this rock, there is a crystal that seems to be branded into its surface or car rather carved into it. Um, so they have like an energy field just between them where this seemingly infinitely black hole uh, c contrudes and just forms in strange shapes. And uh, it, it seems that this might be the source of what 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 is uh, holding these souls captive okay well I, when i get close enough to the um creature um i want to uh, use my trident to fish command to try and take control of him to dominate him or them whatever <laughs> yes uh, but before you do um Sorry, there was a very strange noise. I'm sorry for the dead silence. Um, yes, my dog is having fun. Um, Jabber. Why? You notice something glimmering just in the periphery of your vision. Look at it. And what you can see is the reflection of a spear being uh, held at uh, throwing uh, stance at you and it will yeah he will attempt to uh, hit you with the spear oh god it wasn't a threat it was an actual oh, okay yeah no it uh, yeah. wasn't actual <laughs> hit me yes since your stealth roll wasn't too so good, good he it was so good. he roll he, he to be fair, he rolled a crit on the his roll, so. Ah, uh, okay. No, yes. I don't feel so bad. No, no, you shouldn't. Uh, yes, so. He rolls a six. That does not hit. That would not hit a naked person. <laughs> no. <laughs> Like, it's it just and naked people are surprisingly hard to hit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it just right. stuck in the sand just in front of you. Yeah, it's or it's... actually it's not just in front. Of you, it's like five feet in front. Is of that you. is that a cue for an initiative? Uh, indeed, it is. That sounds like a cue for an initiative. So, please go ahead. Ooh, I got a big number. Is this everybody or is this just Joe? I don't know. Everybody, go ahead and roll initiative. Everybody. I got an 18. Uh, let's see here. And this, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's 18 also. Uh, so. 17. Which, 17. Which one of you has the higher dexterity, let's just say? I only have uh, dexterity 13. 13. Uh, okay. I and 20. I 20. Yeah. So, Terry, you will go. Noise. All right, so terror, it is you. You so, uh, you have also seen this um, from the shadows uh, that another one of these Alwins have been throwing a spear at your companion, but you do not seem yet to have been noticed. Uh, 
I'm assuming that we are the the level that we leveled up to. Yes. Yes. Right. How far away is this uh, this fishy this fishy character? How far away from me is it? Mm, well, you do notice that this one is about twenty feet. If you wish to swim, um, you you can get to him within twenty feet of movement. Uh, you also notice that Oberon uh, decided to swim up to a plateau for some reason towards it, and he is roughly 20, uh, 15 feet away. Oh, just a heads up, DM. I, um, as after leveling up, I have a 30 foot range and, and also can breathe underwater passively. <clears throat> oh, so I can cool. get closer to things faster. Dang. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. I want to sneak up behind this this fishy fellow, and then I would like to uh, sneak attack. Um, go ahead. Right, all right. Uh, well, yeah. I yes. Go ahead. Interrupt. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, remind me, because I think. Oh, my brain is not here today, as if it ever is. Uh, let's see now. Stealth attacks you do with advantage, correct? If they don't see you, yes. Yes. Okay. So yep. you will have advantage on this attack. Right, so that is... Right. Which means my first attack is 20-something. Uh, yes, that will count as a hit. You're right. Right. Uh, so then... But go ahead and roll again to see if you can get a crit, or if you haven't no, already. No. no, I already have. Yeah, okay. Right. Let's see now. So first, here comes a rogue with all the extra dice. Let's see now. And uh, let's see. So first, it is 10 piercing damage. Uh, yes. Right, and then I roll four of these. Uh, let's see. And then 12 more sneak attack damage. Wow. So hidden. <laughs> yeah. You can tell this was a very good cut since it does not seem to have the strength anymore to stand up uh how does your sneak attack look as you in one hit kills this creature it through uh, the spear right this is the yeah yes this is the one so basically like it like an eel uh tear sort of sneaks around the rocks and sort of pops up behind it like a dark shadow and then takes out the rapier and sort of skewers right through it and then twists it out and comes out with a piece of meat. Here's something more to cook for you. English bad. Here's something more for you to cook. <laughs> any uh, bonus actions? Was there any other fish in here? Not that you could... That you've seen. Uh, right. Then uh, I guess I'll try and sneak again into the shadows. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see here. Wow, a nat one. I mean, that leaves me at 12, but still it's a nat one. So. Ouch. Yikes. Uh, yeah, so this blood that comes out of this creature as you skewered it. Um, it kind of leaves a big red smoke. And uh, even though you might think that you have found a good place to hide behind a knee-high rock, uh, it's quite clear, as they can. some of them can see your backside poking out from it with a big red warning puff of blood given away their location. 
I'm so sneaky. <laughs> and, <laughs> so uh, sneaky. Oberon, it is your go. I'm in the shadow of his pumping. Yeah. Huh. So I'm I'm um, skimming along the edge using cover with rocks to get closer to the guy up on the plateau. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, so, like I said before, we got started here. I wanted to do the uh, Triton to Fish Command um, Dominate Beast at a range of sixty feet um, to uh, my buddy up there on the plateau. Um, so he needs to beasts. Uh, you, you know, uh, because you've encountered these beasts before uh, when you've stayed with a merfolk, that these are not. Well, beasts, does that count for humanoids? Yes, it should be, right? Anything yeah, that has point. a natural swimming speed, I can dominate with this. With oh, this, yeah, that uh, was a thing. Oh, yeah, that was a thing. Yes. Well, go ahead and use it. Okay, so they need to make a, a DC 15 wisdom check. It rolls a total of 12, and it is now under your control. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I want to, uh, so I have the ability to um, said to give it command, so I want to send it down and try and have it uh, remove the crystal at the center of the mass down there in the middle of the room. It has taken the command. And, uh, and he last, so you had, you, it was a bit, almost 15 feet until you reach this creature. I don't know what the cast range is of this, but uh, you had feet. vision all the time. 60 feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any movements, you, other movements? Um, I'll go actions? ahead and, I'll go ahead and perch up where he was. Um, okay. And try and go behind, you know, almost complete cover, just kind of peeking over the edge. But I want to pay attention to what he's doing because I want to see what happens because... <laughs> I'm feeling like we have to interact with that at some point down there, and I want to see if it's going to turn me into into a red cloud <laughs> first. So we'll see what happens to him first. <laughs> okay, so uh, it is your dominated creature's turn, and it will use its full movement to get on top of this rock formation, and it will shove... Uh, pick out a dagger and shove it underneath the crystal and attempt to remove it. I watch with bated breath up there, bubbles leaking out of my lips as I smile. Unfortunately, he slips with the dagger, but when he does, this rock uh, that the crystal is on, starts to bleed just slightly. <laughs> Interesting. And the crystal is still there. Can I shoot the rock? You could. You have vision of it. It's... Uh... And it's your turn. So. All right. I will shoot the rock. I may have gone insane, but that is due to lack of oxygen because I'm underwater. Haven't been able to do my character voice because we're underwater and I can't talk. Blub, 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 blub. Uh, over 20. Over 20 hits. Nice. Uh, I Do I roll damage? I just shot a rock. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, go, yeah, no, yes, go ahead. Roll damage. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, man, I only rolled a two on the damage dice, so 17. 17. So, your arrow flies through, it strikes the rock, and gets... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you meant... Yes. So, the arrow flies into 
this rock and the something starts rock. to move. Ah! Starts to move underneath the sand that you st you're standing on. Ah! As you hear a, or you can feel the motions of a, because I don't know if you can hear that well underwater. Haven't tried uh, listening uh, to. Sound waves can travel just as easily uh, in water as air. Okay. Due Very to well. the vibrations. But if it's okay. too loud to blow, the motion of the ocean. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hmm. uh, and then uh, you can hear a roar underneath, just underneath the sand. Oh no! As more blood starts to seep out of whatever uh, it is. Then, as Pain my bonus action, I will mark this unknown entity as my hunter's, as my slayer's prey. It just means I can shoot it better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now, any movements? Uh. uh, uh mm. Can I get onto a rock and not onto the sand? You yes, you can. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll swim up to like the side of the cave and like grab onto the side so it's not I'm not like. There are some bigger rocks is. standing on the sand as well, so you, you yeah. have options. I'll do that. But if you want to find a plateau or something, you can pretty yeah. much find it within the reach. Yeah, just just so I'm not on the ground, so it yeah, can't. Well. Absorb me. Good, good. So, next it was the one that Terror took out. But from behind a piece of uh, a huge, uh, huge, a bigger rock standing next to this, uh, what turns out not to be part of the natural rock formations in this cave uh, steps out this bigger uh, bigger Sahogwin forearmed, wielding two uh, broad axes and he comes out So that's what we thought the rock was or is he hiding somewhere else and then he steps out? No, he is hiding close to it uh, Gotcha Yes And uh, yeah He should be on screen now. Uh. Oh, that guy. He's got a tutu on. <laughs> yeah, it sort of looks like it. I don't like it. So this, and he also uh, rocks these uh, black veins and pitch black eyes, and he almost seems a bit frozen as well. Frozen as in frozen in place, or frozen as in just like, you know, uh, colder, like more cold. Okay, um, gotcha. Rigid. Yeah, more uh, stifling movements. I think is the word that I'm looking for. He comes out with more uh, twitchy than natural movements. And uh, he will take one look at uh, you, um, Tyr. And he will use his full movement to swim up towards you and uh, attempt to hit you three times. Damn. Uh, I can see him, right? You can see him. Okay, yeah. Wait, just... Roll. Uh, so he will make two attacks uh, with uh, his axes, and uh, for the last attack, he will attempt to bite you. Uh, so he rolled a 25, a 9, and a. What is that? Oh, maths. Um, 16. Uh, I'll use Uncanny Dodge on the first of them. Which is a axe attack. 
Yes, sure. So it'll only do half damage. Yes, yes. So damage count as 14, so you will take 7 points of slashing damage. Did the 16 also hit you, or did you manage to just, uh, evade? It just, evade? it just hit you. Okay, then. And that was a bite attack. Which managed to deal an additional uh, nine points of piercing damage. And when, when this slashes and cuts and bites comes down towards you and the blood starts to seep into the water, uh, you can see that it gets enraged. And uh, through these blackouts now, these bloodstained cracks start to rip open. And you can now... Uh, see also blood from his eyes starting to come out and uh, color the uh, the water red and finally it's the other thing's turn so the thing hiding underneath the sand what you can see now is that this big rock that turns out to be something else rises its head and it's a big snake-like creature with four tentacles protruding out from its body. And with the uh, smaller, um, with a small gemstone attached to its forehead that seems to be in contact with this singularity. Does it have eyes that we can see? It has eyes, yes. Uh, four of them, to be, gotcha. uh, to be exact. And it starts to, they roll like chameleon eyes. So he, they start to frantically turn turn around uh, as these tentacles spread out from the sand, and has some range uh, out into this chamber that you find yourself in. And it will attempt to hit both Jabber and uh, Oberon uh, with its tentacles. I don't wanna. So, Mr. Oberon, it rolls a 23 to hit against you. That hits. And uh, uh, Joe, um, yeah. a tentacle comes for, at you uh, for 13. Can't touch this. <laughs> So you were a bit more prepared that something was hiding underneath the sand. Yeah. Um, so you just barely managed to get out of the way, and it crashes down into the sand next to you. Uh, Oberon, however, you take uh, 1d10 plus 3 points of bludgeoning, bludgeoning damage. So... Uh, that is a total of six. Got it. And it's back to the top with you, Terror. So you see these tentacle rise, and uh, you are safely standing on top of this plateau for the time being. And uh, you see this snake creature and uh, this huge bul bulking monster with blood exploding eyes uh, staring down onto you. What is it that you wish to do? Uh, looking up at him, I sort of square my shoulders and I uh, whistle through my fingers and it seems to form sort of an arcane nature to it and all of a sudden he shifts his body and he become he gets the, I use mirror image, so I create three mirror images of myself, and we all stand, sort of blades drawn, 
looking at him. And we were all slightly different. The hand hit hat at the side, you know, towards the back. Like there's slight differences between each of them, but he don't really know which one was the correct one. That's not uh, how mirrors work. I'm <sighs> <Jack Hart. laughs> For fuck's sake. Damn it. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Fine, they all look alike. Who cares? And then, <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. Fuck my idea. Go ahead and flavor it however you want, man. Right. Uh, and uh, that's an action. Uh, yes. So I guess I'll attack with my offhand for a bonus action? Or is that not how it works? Because I don't remember. Uh, you can. But unless you have this dual-wielding proficiency... Um... Feet. I don't think I do. You don't add pr proficiency to it, I believe. Right then, let's just attack. Oof, a mighty eight. Which is a miss. <laughs> eh. Next, uh, it is Oberon. Um, okay, um, so uh, just to check in, where is my enthralled um, little uh, little fish man at this point, now that we have the danger noodle out swinging its tentacles around? Uh, it's still on top of its head, uh, just uh, with the dagger uh, pointed into its skin. Gotcha, okay. So he's, um, he's, he's still holding on to it, and... Okay. Uh, still attempting to follow your command. Great. Um, okay, so I want him to continue to try and uh, rip it out, but I think this time I'm looking for him to cut it out instead of try and pull it out. Um, so, you know, shift shift his thinking to try and cut around the surface of the creature and try and pull this crystal out. Um, I will at the same time... Uh, how far am I away from the, uh, the snake? Uh, you are roughly... Uh, thirty feet away from it, so I believe you could use. Okay, your so um, I want to, I want to, I want to close the distance and um, uh, use my um, trident of cold and try and blind it on the way over there. It is done with an when you hit with an attack. That's when the um, effects of it will take place. Or maybe I didn't okay. specify that. No. Um, oh, okay. sorry. So, yeah. okay, so it sounded like it was a cast thing that could happen twice until a long rest. Twi but does it? Yes, twice a is day. Is it still only twice? Twice a day, but it's going to be when it when it actually hits. Yes, when when it actually hits, you can decide if you want to spend one of those two um, charges two times a day, two charges. Yes. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to go ahead and head over there. Um, towards him <clears throat> and um um and let's see here i will uh swim towards the uh the giant snake tentacle monster uh to get up right next to my um fish creature guy and um i will go ahead and pop my uh, rage along the way uh, and strike it with lightning uh, as i'm getting closer um and let's let's resolve that first i guess Yes. So I That's swim, swim forward, and and uh, lightning sort of surges all over my body. A bunch of bubbles start to kind of crackle and pop around me as I sort of blast forward, leaving this trail of bubbles and lightning, um, lighting up the cave and like flickering blue light. And as I get close to it, I you know reach my palm uh, or you know you know point my hand forward, and lightning blasts off of my fist, striking the creature. All right. So, what was its DC? Uh, 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 it's a dexterity of DC 13. And he rolls on that one. So, ha! go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> uh, okay. Ha! Uh, one lightning damage. <laughs> it, it takes the damage. Is this thing weak to lightning, considering it's a, a water creature? Uh, no, it actually isn't. Okay. Uh, but it, t it takes the damage, and you are within striking range. 
Okay, I'll go ahead and strike it with um, uh, two-handed with my uh, my trident of cold. So go ahead. Okay, so that's a uh, 23. Yeah. That's a 23 to hit. 23 does, in fact, hit him. Awesome. Okay, so, uh, right. and then that's 1d10. Unless you're two handing it, uh, you're dual, dual wielding it, or how do you say? Using yeah, two it's hands. d10 for that's dual wielding. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, now? go ahead. No, no, it's that's correct. Yes. Yeah, D ten, not D eight. Yeah, okay. So seven, so then seven, and then because I'm in rage mode, I get plus two bonus damage. So that's going to be nine, and then I'll use my um, secondary uh, attack as I've leveled to be a beefy, awesome, glistening muscle bastard. That's an eight. So, um, so in rage, uh, plus two to the uh, plus two bonus to the damage roll. I'm assuming is the first roll. Yes. No, it's to every attack. All okay. Damage. Oh, you know what? And I I forgot to add I forgot to add my strength modifier to the first one. Yes, you did. So just okay, add so, up. So that so additionally seven. So attack. seven, eight, nine. Hmm? Oh yeah, I'll just add to this one. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so eight. So that's fourteen. So oh, that's uh, a whole lot. That's that is a whole lot of damage coming down on on him in one single go, and you can start to Andrew see Lito now die. Uh, that you are beginning to carve up uh, the skin on its head, and you are now getting deeper into its into the flesh. I just want to know what's inside its mind, man. Just want to know. I'm curious. curious. Tell me what you're thinking. Show it to me with your flesh. And he, no, you, yeah. Bonus oh. action was to go, um, into rage. Yes. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not, not too familiar with the barbarian class. Sorry. Um, sure. Yeah. Then it is your little friends go. So. You commanded him to attempt to carve around the rock now to see. Yeah, if you still can... trying to remove, still trying to remove the crystal. But his instead of trying to pry it out, he's going to cut it away. So he sticks the dagger in, uh, and it goes. Uh, it goes pretty pretty deep, but he does not seem to have the strength enough uh, in this motion to start to cut around it but it's in there now this the blade is in there the blade is in uh the flesh gotcha uh, just cool. just beneath the uh just beside the the glowing uh crystal like a big old can yeah um oh and while i was attacking him i was intending to do the uh cold uh uh what do you call it the the <clears throat> cold attack to try and blind him yeah. Um, go. So that go ahead. is a con fifteen uh, save for him. Oh, poor, poor guy. Um, yeah, he uh, he rolls a uh, a twelve. Twelve total. Oh, so. he's blind. Awesome. So, so he's blinded the effect... for one round. Yes. Uh, so then he's what, so automatically what... failing ability checks that require sight, and attack rolls have advantage against him, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Woot! Chop him up, my friends! Yes. So I wait around and now... everybody. That was the time to kill it. So coming out from the four eyes, sticking 
out from the sides of this creature. You can now see this dark water start covering it and just flow out from uh, inside of its sockets, taking on a much uh, darker shade than the crystal clear uh, salt water that you're finding yourself in. And it seems to be the effect of the blindness taking hold of it. Nice. Nice. Uh, Joe, you're up next. Joe. Joe's gonna. Joe's gonna shoot him like twice. And uh, first uh, bonus action, gonna Hunter's Mark. And okay. he's blind now, so do I have advantage? Yes. Oh my god, I'm do so much damage. Oh, uh, maybe not. Uh. <laughs> Does a number that does a 17 hit? It just hits. Woo! All right, second attack. Higher than 17, so good enough. I'm gonna roll all of my damage at once, which is a lot. Uh, math is not my strong suit, so. For both attacks, I did 57 damage. Jesus Christ. Was that with the sharpshooter? Yeah, I everything sharpshooter. I don't even turn yeah. that off. Um, That's why I have such yeah. a low to <laughs> 57. Holy. Yeah. That's with, that's with, uh, uh, oh! I'll add a Fury of the Small to add that to that, to add an additional, uh, but to add an, add an additional 7. So, 64. 64. <laughs> that is, that's a sharpshooter, uh, Slayer's Prey, Hunter's Mark. <laughs> Any particular area that you're aiming for with these uh, two arrows? I mean, his eyes. <laughs> Got two arrows both in his eyes. Yeah, and... Uh, coming. Now, there's not only this black smoke coming out from it, both of them seem to have uh, popped as well. And now this green pus is leaking out from his... Uh, not moving eyes. You can sort of see these arrows just drop down um, to the lower um, eyelid. And Oof. they're just dangling there. Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> and it just lets out this roar of so much pain. Oh, God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> And now, uh, it is the your big friend's turn, uh, Mr. Tear, as it will attempt to hit you three times once again. Or, oh, sorry, a checkup before this. Uh, uh, no, um, God, me today. Mr. Joe. Did you have any movement you wish to do before? Ah, uh, no, I'm Terror just chilling. Go. You're just chilling. Okay, so the Baron comes, and he, as I said, he attempts to strike you three more times, both with his axes and uh, goes in for a bite. Oh. One of them is a nat 20. Uh, the second one is a 12, and the third is a 21. Right. So then, let's see, you must roll. I, I roll a d20 because I have a mirror image. Yes. And if I roll a 6 or higher, the attack yeah. changes the attack to duplicate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, let's see. And it's an 11. That's yes. rad. So it's very poof nice. That one. Poof. Yep. <clears throat> uh, and then 
you must roll eight or higher now that I've lost duplicate. And it's an eight fifteen. Poof. So all oh. of his attacks goes into your No wait. Yeah. Both yeah. of his attacks goes into your images and he just stands there seemingly furiated that no blood is coming out from you. And uh, yeah, he will stand, stay where he is, and it's the uh, big Eldritch monster's turn. And it will uh, let out, it will open its mouth and attempt to fill the room with a frosty mist filled with small icy um, sharp <clears throat> icicles swirling out from it and i want all of you to make a uh, dexterity saving throw i want to though can i not dexterity saving throw yay Ooh. i crit i it, and it's a quite a high one. It's a DC of 18. Ooh, no. No, Dang. that didn't that didn't succeed. Unless yeah, I got a 17. 17. Unless I have that some magical skill. And I also permits... use evasion. Yes. Wait, hold up. I got something new recently. I got upgraded slayer. Uh Whenever, whenever the target of your slayer's prey forces you to make a saving throw, add one d six. I that forgot I was, I couldn't save my life. That could it be did, helpful, but it could have. <laughs> okay, so um, the swirling shards of ice uh, flaying around you, and you guys take three d tens worth of. Uh, piercing damage. Ow. Except the terror, which can seemingly dodge all of these with ease. And you will not be affected thanks to your evasion. Yeah. I also have resistance to piercing. <clears throat> piercing. Rage you, you. <clears throat> I so I take full out. damage. <laughs> so, yes. Mr. Joe, you will take 20 points of piercing damage. Oh, Ow. Over on, you will take Half of that. Sorry, how much was that again? Half. Yeah. So ten. Ten. Gotcha. And it will also attempt to uh, hit both you, uh, Oberon, and Joe once again with its tentacle attacks. Does that require him to see us? Indeed, it does. Then he'll just fail. Ha <laughs> yes. ha! Blinded, bitch! So he will just, you know, start to smack the uh, uh, into the sand around you, spurring up more of just grains flying everywhere uh, as he lets out a roaring rage, not feeling any of you underneath the, his tentacles. And Yikes. it's back to the top. So, it's here. It is you once again. Uh, can I use my bonus action to try and hide from the, the, the man who's trying to kill me with the creature? Because as a rogue, I have the thing where I use a bonus action to try and hide. Yes. But I'm asking yeah. you what you think about it. Well, he seems to be pretty locked on top. Right, right. No, it's fine. It's I, fine. I'll attack. Yeah. I'll just attack. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll start off with the first attack, which is a uh fifteen. A fifteen uh, does unfortunately not hit this guy. Damn it! Damn it! Uh, right. Um, damn it. Uh, mm, yeah. 
I will then... Damn it. <laughs> I'll try and attack with the... Uh... No, let's, let's go out with a bang. I'll use my bonus action to cast Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade. Shadow okay. Blade. So, how does your Shadow Blade look, and what does it do? Shadow Blade is I is that I summon a magical blade. Oh wait, 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 wait. I will first check because No wait, mirror image is not added as a concentration spell. No. So I can do it. Right, because I've done this mistake before. Quite many times. times. Many times. Many, many, many times. Right. And so I create a sword of solidified gloom in my hand, and it lasts for a minute with concentration, and it deals 2d8 psychic damage on a hit. It's finesse and lightweight, and I can throw it. Uh, right. And when I'm fighting someone in dim light or darkness, I have advantage. Uh, right. So what he does is... He sort of seems to shape mystical shapes with his hands. And then he seems to draw, like, a sword from his boot. Like, it's a gigantic boot knife. So he sort of, uh, he, he sheaths his dagger quickly and then draws out a gigantic boot knife. Very cool. And then he waits. Yes. Mr. Oberon, it is your go. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same and uh, attack him with lightning and then double attack. So let's, let's do the lightning first. So I reach my hand, or so I, I've, <laughs> I'm holding, I'm basically on him with my trident stuck in his body. So I reach up and slam my, fi or my hand down onto his tentacle and just lightning arcs across my arm and just zaps him. Super cool. All right, so... What was the DC once again? Uh, that is a DC 13 dexterity. A DC 13, and he fails with a 10. Bada bing! Go ahead and roll damage. Take three damage, bitch! Yeah, so the lightning arcs down, and it just, you can see it ripple out into all of his tentacles. Uh, and it, the, the blood inside the small gash that your Zogwin friend and where you're holding your trident now starts to boil slightly. Awesome. So I reach back two-handed, hold my trident high gripping the tentacle with my powerful thighs for, for leverage. <laughs> and I stab down with all my might, striking him with my trident of cold. Second. And he is still blinded because it's into until the end of this go. So you will have advantage. Until the end of this round? Well, oh, right, okay, turn. fair enough, because I did it Even right. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, in that case, I got a... Uh, let's see here. So he's got... I'm trying to add all these pluses in here. Um, got a... Uh, that's going to be a 20, 20 to hit. Twenty to hit does hit, yes. Ouch. Okay, first one is uh let's see five, six, seven damage. Seven damage. Did you add the one for, uh from the plus one of your magical weapon as well? I'm I'm totally not doing that. I forgot to do that, sorry. So uh, eight damage there. Um yeah. My bad. Uh, six, uh, let's see here. Six, seven, eight, nine. So nine damage for the second one. Second strike. So in the second strike, I'll go ahead and redo the cold attack. Um, yes. Which is... 
a DC 15 con save. This time he rolls a 22 on the save. So constitutional. Big creature. Did you do the Buddy. disadvantage for him being blind? He doesn't I have cannot. it on constitution saves. No, it's so attack rolls saves. against this creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have to never, never mind. Yeah, didn't read far enough. Whoop. Yeah, it's no, no, that's fine. It's unconstitutional. Uh, so <laughs> the, it misses this time. Cool. Uh, yes, but he still takes uh, the seventeen points of uh, slashing damage that you did, and you can awesome. now feel that. You have reached it. The trident gets stuck just into the bones of this creature, and they see, uh, seem to be um, not hot, like hard as a um, any bone that you would be normally familiar with. They are more. Um, He's got a really hard bone. Okay, gotcha. I'm with you. Yeah. No, it's softer, um, actually. A softer Aww. bone than you're familiar with. Oh, softer <laughs> bones. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, There's a spell for that. So you're trying to just go straight onto it, uh, straight down into it. And uh, any movements or additional actions? I'm I'm holding on for dear life, but I do want my um, thrall to continue to cut away and do some damage. Uh, yes. Whilst trying to remove the uh, the thingy, the sparkling thingy, well, sparkle. Uh, it will be its turn, and uh, it will attempt to keep following your orders. And it crits. Nice. So yes. <laughs> uh, let's see for. Yeah. Um, so it follows your command through, and with the knife stuck just beneath the skin uh, surrounding uh, this crystal that's on top of its head, it will uh, make a smooth 360 turn with the in a circular motion, and this rock pops out um, with a piece of meat come uh, being stuck to it. Uh, as it falls down onto the ground in front of this uh, tentacled snake monster. Uh, and Woot. the connection uh, that the crystal had with the singularity now seems to be broken. And the, the smoke coming out from uh, being dragged into it from inside of this, mount, uh, this cave entrance uh, also um, stops. But the singularity is still there. And it, it seems to be um, calming down a bit, so now it's a, a bit more stable. But it's still a, uh, but it's still there, still present. Awesome. Does anything happen to my my creature when he's touching the crystal? No, actually, okay. nothing. Nothing to him. Uh, but I think you, yeah. Uh, no. So since he hasn't no. used his movement yet, I'm going to go ahead and command him to bring it over to me so he can trade it, give it to me. <clears throat> Which obviously I won't be able to take till next turn, but yeah. Yep. Uh, very well. And now it is your... So... <laughs> he nods. Um... I don't know why underwater sounds like a turkey. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> Oh no, the underwater turkeys, not again. Hey, at least they're lovely. not on fire. <laughs> Our lovely Goblin Joe, it is your turn. So you've seen what has transpired. Yes. And uh, I've seen the singularity has been interrupted, yet the singularity remains. Yes. When we must become one with the singularity. All hail the singularity. It is single and ready to mingle. 
with your soul. <laughs> I will shoot the big thing. Go ahead and roll for attack. <laughs> you know, the classic. Uh, I both miss. Both shots miss. So, uh, that's the downside of always using sharpshooter. Is What did you roll? I rolled uh, an 11 and a 10. Yeah, they miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, I then swim closer to the singularity. All right. Um, but make sure I don't so, get sucked in. It, it, the singularity is um, like, how am I to explain these in? It's in That's good. I'm not talking to you anymore, Alexa. Stop it. <laughs> so, you, machine. So it's okay. just there's much more than a ruler is. Yeah, I will. I will uh, d d d swim a little bit closer to it and just look at it. Get a uh, real yeah. so you're standing, look at it. So I'm between you and the singularity, there is about five feet if you use your full movements. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And I'll just be five feet away from it. And then bonus action, I'll Slayer's Prey, the big spooky guy, so in case he attacks me. But until then, I'm just going to keep looking at this singularity. Yes. Um, and it is the Baron's turn. And uh, Terror, unfortunately... You are still its prey. And it will repeat its last. Uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, it will do the same as it did last turn. And attempt to hit you three times two with the axis and one time with its bite. But it rolls very badly, and only one of them, uh, one of the axes will hit you. So he rolled a 10 and a 12 nice. and a 21. Lucky me. Let's see if my uh, duplicate will take it. It will, 13. Just out of curiosity, so... do you run out of duplicates every time that it hits one and it doesn't do any damage? Yeah, it I have, breaks I'm, like, I'm out now. Because yeah, like, gotcha, gotcha. I had three, and they sort of run out. Nice, nice. I'm just curious how it works. It's a cool spell. Oh, no, yeah. It's, it's a really nice spell. Great it's for defense. Wizards. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now, with just you remaining, it uh, grins at you with this vicious and evil smile. And you can see its mouth just filled with two rows of these sharp... Uh, like shark fangs. Tear looks back, looks at the jerky, sort of, the still kind of frozen movements, and he gets an idea. Well, that will have to wait, as it is the creature's turn. And it will attempt to shake you guys off that stands on top of its head. And uh, so I suppose it will just roll strength versus your uh, athletics. Uh, okay. I yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm fine. I am suspended in the waters of the You got a 12. Life. You got a 12.
Oh, lu lucky you. However, your friend is not. As it rolled a four plus seven on yours and a 26 on your little Sauguin's friends. Uh, so you see your friend being knocked over and uh, he yeah, tumbles off the creature. And uh, you little can see buddy. Now, uh, still not happy with with having you there. Uh, it will attempt to hit you twice with both of its tentacles. I stand there grinning, knowing it can't see me. Blah 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 blah. Uh, so the first one is. Um. Yeah, that's a 22 to hit on the first one. And the second one is, a, right. is an 11. So these, these tentacle attacks take sight to see me, and he can't see. So automatic he's, fail, yeah? He's, still, he's not blind anymore, is he? No, he's yeah, not. Yeah, I got... Oh, no, he didn't. Damn it! Oh, no, oh, he, 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 yes. That's right, he, 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 he beat that yeah. one. Okay, so what was the first one again? 20... Uh, 22. Oh, yeah, that hits. What's the damage? Uh, not much. Uh, he rolls a two and a one, uh, plus seven. So you take tier uh, ten uh, bludgeoning damage. Ten bludgeoning damage, so five because I've got resistance. Whooped. Yes. And uh, that is its go. So it's top, back to the top of the turn order. Terror. Once again. Yeah. It is time. Uh, he casts Shape Water and freeze, creates an ice cube of five feet around the uh, sea creature in front of him, like his torso or whatever. Because you can create a five-foot cube of ice, so he does that to the sea creature. So nice. He sheathes his blade, <laughs> and then he does, like, he sort of crushes in this ice around him. Uh, and which which part of its body did you do you wish to do this on? The the upper body. Uh, since it's a large creature, yeah, the upper body. So uh, the two arms and uh, his torso are now stuck in this cube of ice. So it's holding him, and he it does not seem very happy with the situation. As he's frantically just start to bite into the water, uh, any <laughs> cool uh, party, any movements or bonus actions? Uh, I guess I will use my bonus action to stab him in the leg. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, with a let's see. Uh, that'll be a 21, I think. 21 is a hit. Uh, let me just see. Because that was a magic weapon, and it does... Oh, right. And he will take... Uh, wait. Uh, uh. That's a wrong dice. Three what number psychic is that? damage. Three psychic damage. Oof. Feel the pain. Ooh. So much damage. You hurt his feelings. You're damn right. This, yeah, so powerful. Yeah, I psyched him <laughs> out. Yeah, so you stab him um, uh, with your shadow blade, and since it's a, I guess I assume it's a bit un incorporeal in some way. So the way I the way I see it, it just goes through the ice without harming it, since it deals psychic damage. Well, I mean, I, I froze the torso, so I assume yeah. that... Oh, yeah, it, you yeah. have still aim for it. Oh. I mean, it's like a oh, shadow yeah. blade. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it leaves no marks um, on... except for a burn uh, on his leg, and he, take, he takes the damage. Right. Uh, so, any any movement? 
Uh, nah, I feel good where I am. I'll stay here. Very well. And Oberon, it is your go. Okay, um, I uh, uh, command my creature to come over to me and give me the crystal. <clears throat> um, and then I uh, blast. Uh, then I, I and and then send him to uh, attack um, the uh, the ice cube friend. <laughs> yes. Um, and um, and then uh, I swim down looking for a uh, a nice hard rock and raise the uh, crystal high with both hands and try and smash it. Wait, that's worth money. So, but, um, well, as in point of order, it will give you the crystal on its go. So you don't actually have it right now. It, you won't be able to do that until your next turn. The creatures I command happen on my same turn, though. The command does, I believe, not the action. Okay, so then I use my movement to go get it from him, and then the rest of my movement to go down to the floor, because he's yeah. drifting down, no doubt, to the floor after you get to the top. Yes, yes. There you go. Absolutely. And you rolled a... Uh, so go ahead and roll 23. Um, yeah, and you smash it against the... against the rock, and... Uh, Go ahead and roll, roll damage. What would that be? Roll rock damage. Yeah. I don't know. Roll, my intention roll, is to just rock. my intention is to just break it <clears throat> with an athletics check. Mm, what's your? Uh, okay, let's do it like this then. What is your athletics? Plus seven. Plus seven. Okay, go ahead and roll a d8 plus your strength mod uh, as damage. We're doing rage, it live. Rage. D8 plus strength? Yes. 10. Plus it 2 does for rage, 10. so 12. Yes. 12. So I guess uh, I guess I probably would have been trying to smash this with my weapon if I had known that this thing had HP. My intention was to do an athletics like role play move to try and break it. Like so oh yeah, but successfully. Oh. It, don't worry. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, sorry. Um, maybe I should have explained. I that's good for me to know. But you still succeed in destroying it. It had an AC what? of twelve and twelve HP. Um, so you come down with the with your force onto the rock, and it shatters into two. Uh, just, you know, uh, straight across, and it comes off as two halves. And, uh, but the singularity seems to still remain. Why would it do that? Why would it still be there? Good question, Joe. Go find out. Swim in there, Betty. I'm gonna. Be our little test goblin. I'm going to poke it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should attack the darkness. <laughs> yeah, I attack the dark. I attack the pergola. I attack the gondola. <laughs> um, so, any... Uh, uh, any any bo bonus action from you, Mr. Oberon? Uh, how close am I to the ice cube guy? Uh, he is roughly 20 feet above you. Then no. Okay. Um, does the lightning triggers every round? Or is that something... Lightning triggers to... every round, but they have to be within 10 feet of me. Well, which is my oldest size. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, no, very well. It is uh, then your little creature's turn. What did you command it to do? Oh, I yeah. sent him to go over there and stab the ice cube buddy in the face. Yes, so uh, it will fly, swim up towards uh, this creature that I will be considering is, I don't know, uh, grappled, I guess? Or Yeah, grappled sounds reasonable. Yeah. 
How long does the ice cube last? Uh, I think it's a minute with concentration. Let's it, be it concentration. Isn't just a shape. Oh no, yeah, it's not you... concentration. You're right. Yeah. Let's see. What did you cast? Wait. Shape water. So it's just a thing that happens. I mean, if you want to think deep thoughts about ice cubes, go right ahead. I mean, if it's a cantrip, <laughs> oh, one hour. Well, if you so you froze a guy. Yeah, he yeah, froze its uh, upper body. Typically, most cold damage spells involve a Constitution saving throw, since Shape Water is not a damaging spell. You could just homebrew that it's a con save to break out of it. Yeah, yeah. I That's... mean it's an ice cube. And... Yeah, yeah. And you can only freeze five feet of water, technically, with shape water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's... but yeah, we could. Yeah, it, uh, it's up to you. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah, it's good it enough. It it it, to, like, it happened last turn, so yeah. not gonna go back on that. Well, I, mean, uh, I mean, if yes. it's still frozen or not. <laughs> oh, it is. It is still frozen. So one, nice. let's say one minute then. All right. And uh, yeah, so your little um, scaly friend swims up and attempts to hit him with its knife. And it hits with a mighty 17. Mighty. And he takes five points of piercing damage. And it is the end of its go now. <gasps> Mr. Joe. Mr. That's Sir Joe to you. Mr. Joe was my son. Sir Joe, what is it that you wish to do? Okay, is Big Big Boy still alive? The Big Boy is still alive. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna shoot the Big Boy. Cause... Go ahead. Need to get rid of that because he's he's painful. Uh, does seventeen hit? Seventeen just hits. Yeah, that's a safety. That means, and then a twenty-one will hit. Yeah, which means it's big damage time. It's a lot of ones. Uh. Fifty-six. With a fifty-six, how do you wish to kill it? Uh, I, I will, since he's probably not looking at me, looking at other people, I'm up at the singularity, I'll shoot down into the crater created by the gem being ripped out of his noggin. I will shoot my bow and just so you explode his rest of his head. And that is what happens. The arrows fly in see effortlessly, seemingly, and uh, his movement starting. You can sort of see the tentacles die down and fall onto the ocean floor uh, with some slight wriggle to them. Nah. As its brain has been damaged in the process. And then there's just Icy Boy and possessed guy left yes uh i will touch the singularity when you reach your so when you reach your hand into it uh your eyes go pitch black and you see a visualization of something that we will come back to later cool after these messages so stay tuned. And uh, it is the Baron's turn. And he will go for attempt to break out of this, his rock. So, this, the ice. And Weird. he rolls. Uh, not good. 
yeah, he rolls a, an eight. And let's just say the AC of the ice is your... What would that be? What's your DC? My spell DC is 13. 13, and it rolls an 8. So That sounds like a reasonable rule to have it save against the DC. Yeah, but it will still attempt to bite you. That's not very ice. That's not very cool of it. He is rolling oh, so, that's better. so badly. Uh, that's a 10. So he fails on that. And since we are going back to the top of the turn order, it is time for a little break, I would say. Ah, yes. yes. So we will return in 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to go refresh our drinks, get some snacks, run around the block, do 500 push-ups. And when we return, we'll wrap up this combat, hopefully, and figure out what the heck is in a singularity. So join us in a couple of moments for more. Welcome back. Hope you had a nice break. I know I sure did, and I think my companions did as well. So, back to the top of the turn order with uh, you, Tyr. So, the, the battlefield looks like this. You have two enemies left. One is encased in a cube of ice, and the other one is dominated by the uh, ocean trident that uh, the uh, magical flexing chef barbarian is sprouting from its back, his back. What do you wish to do? I will attack the uh, the incubed creature in front of me. This Go will ahead. be very nice, very nice. Uh, right. So we'll start off with the uh, the rapier. It is a twenty three. Twenty three just hits. Right. And that'll do 10 damage. He takes it. So he you stab deeper into the gut, I assume. Yep. yep. And then we attack with the uh, with the emotional blade, uh, which is an 18. It hits as well. Right. And then that is, oh shit, 16 damage. Two eights. Very nice hit. So you can see now blood just spurs out from the puncture hole that your rapier did. And uh, his his head is just reeling back and forth as the pain from your psychic weapon really tears into its mind. And Oberon... Good sir, it is your turn. Unless, yeah. All right. Um, I will uh, swim up. Am I close enough to the? No, I'm not. So he's twenty feet away. Okay, so I want to swim up to the incubicled guy, and um, zap him with lightning along the way. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. So that is a DC 13 dex save, but I'm guessing he can't dex anything because he's grappled. So he does with hits, probably, right? uh, he does with disadvantage since his feet are still uh, able to move. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So yeah, DC 13 save. So I swim towards him, hold my hand out with my uh, other hand holding my trident trailing behind me, lightning crackling down my arm, and it arcs towards our cubicle friend. And uh, he fails the dice roll uh, with an 11. So go ahead and roll. Start with the damage from the your uh, lightning. Two lightning damage. He takes it, and his knack, neck just snaps backwards a bit, and he can sort of see the... Uh, 
the trident coming down for him. Right. And then I bring my other hand to my trident and stomp down on his head with my trident. He seems quite ecstatic. Go and roll ahead and roll with advantage. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. Um, um, nine? So, <laughs> or no, uh, so ten. The <laughs> yeah, Ow. so the, the, the first attack misses. Uh, so I, your feet does not seem to be uh, holding good. All right, and my second attack hits with, or my second attack is a nineteen, which does in fact hit. You. Ouch. <laughs> oh, no, that's the wrong roll. Oh, my bad. Uh, my second attack, I do D10. Yes. So it's... Nice. So six. Plus the damage from the rage, plus an additional one. Comes yeah, so it, I got three, and then damage from the rage, which is two, and then the plus one for the uh, uh Total. for the plus 1 weapon. <clears throat> yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And then plus 4 for my strength. My bad. So 10. 10. 10 okay. on the second one. So my friend, how do you wish to finish him off? Uh I raise my trident double-handed, squeezing the tube or the cube between my muscly legs for for strength <laughs> and stability and smash it down just bifurcating his head and plummeting the, or, and, and, and st uh, just st sticking my trident into the top of the ice cube, uh, blood swirling around me in a cloud, and I go, <laughs> and scream in enjoyment and rage and, and, and barbarianness. Much beef! Muscles and manlies. Not often I know what a word means, but I do know what bifurcating means. Oh, yeah. Slice in half. Sorry, chat. That, that was a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big word weirdly one i know and and the uh, bonus actions or i you have still have 10 feet of movement anything you wish to i don't use. have anything else i can do you still have your uh, fish friend close by oh right my fish friend uh, but we've killed everybody at this point right everybody That's except him Okay, so uh, fish man, fly into the center or swim into the center of the swirling black mass uh, and communicate worst. with me what happens when you're in there. Oh, the Such worst. Um, yes, and it's his go. Uh, he will attempt to do this, but gets knocked back uh, when he gets closer to it. And he so he attempts mm -hmm. to do this once again and gets knocked on his ass. So he's now sitting in the sand, pouting. Cool. He can just remain prone and wait for us to kill him. That's my second command. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> and then it is you, Joe. I'm uh, in the sin singularity. Yes. I have become uh, one with the singularity. What you start to see now is um, in front in front of you. Uh, it's it's like you've entered this mass with your arms taken into it, and what you can see now in your mind is something that is about to shape, and that is what you get from your six seconds of your turn. Sounds now, good. It is back to the top of the turn order. It is a U-Terror. Terror. Oh, sorry. I misheard. We can I tell. Mean, well, I guess I'll... Um... 
Hmm. It's but still. Did, did, did Joe have any reaction? I my eyes are closed. I have a hand in the singularity. Nothing yeah. else is happening. Okay. Yes. I guess I'll approach Joe and shake him. You do not get close enough. So you're roughly uh, five to ten feet away from I'll him. I'll fire my bow. No, I'll get as close as I can. Kill the ah. fish things. There's still a fish guy left. Yes. Yeah, my fish guy's lying on the ground guy. prone, waiting for your murders. <clears throat> Fine. I'll go to the fish guy and I will coup yeah, de gras. You can do that. Go ahead and attack him with advantage. Right. We, uh, wait, no, not one, but I'm a halfling, so I get to reroll. Right. And you have advantage. And I have advantage. And that's a crit. Right. <laughs> yep. Roll damage. Let's see now. So it was max on the first die, which is 8, plus 6, uh, which is 14, plus 5, which is 19, then plus the sneak attack die. Let's see. Uh, 34. And that is enough to bring him down to zero. How do you wish to kill him? As he sort of lays there, I, I close his eyes, and I sink the dagger into his heart. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. It's okay. Now look at now. Go, go, go. Meet the others in heaven, or wherever the fuck your people go. Uh, or as he would hear it, blah blah blah. <laughs> and then he has nightmares of the sea turkeys until he dies. <laughs> I use minor illusion to create sea turkeys as I kill him. <laughs> and you are now officially out of initiative. So uh, you can now see your friend, uh, the goblin Joe, standing with his hand into this. A black, swirling thing that hovers just above the ground. And uh, he does not seem... He seems to just be standing like a statue with his hand disappearing into this. And I would say that, Terror, this is... A... I think you could roll an Arcana check since you're familiar with m magic. I I do magic. I I I have magic. Uh 15 15. So originally what you f felt from this it is almost like a conjuration of some sorts and it was being twisted into uh, they were attempting to create something using the souls of these undead sailors or the ghosts of the spirits of these sailors. But now with the crystal broken and uh, it not getting any more energy from uh, from anywhere, uh, it still has some power. And what you can assume is uh, this is, whatever they tried to make is no longer there, but the, but the power of conjuration still exists in a, in the center of this. So, Oberon, what you see, feel now is something is being shaped into your hand. And what this is, uh, it is still a bit unclear to you, but you do feel the sting of two uh, a couple of bites coming down onto your wrist. And you will go ahead and make a constitution saving throw of 14. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, did I say Obra? I meant Joe. Oh. So, so I'm very sorry. Oh, good lord. Uh, since, Joe, you're the one that... Uh, that has his arm stuck in. But I don't have as good of a constitution as Oberon. <laughs> that would have been nice. I got an 11. 11. So, uh, 
from the bites or the stings that you can feel on your hand, you will take. Four points of poison damage. But with this, you do get the feeling that what you're holding is something that you yourself can choose to create. Uh, as you hold the power of conjuration in your hand. And it can be formed into a weapon an armor, or a piece of jewelry. I mean, jewelry. I mean, obviously jewelry. It will be magical in nature. Can I have a grill? As For my long teeth? as you can... Yeah. <clears throat> Is this too I think you would have had to shove fire? your head into it for that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I will do... Yep, it will be jewelry. Jewelry. Because my hand's in there. Okay. Maybe a sweet bracelet. Or one of those cool full finger rings that goes over the whole length of your finger. Or like a weird hand band. Or some gloves. Yes. So, one of those bands from oh, that... nose to ear. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. There you go. Uh, so... What what jewelry type of item do you wish it to be? Did you wish it to be? Oh, um, expensive. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's all. I uh, no know. no. Did you want the long ring finger covering thing? Yeah, let's or... do the long ring finger thingy. The long ring finger thing thingy. The finger uh, claw. Yes. So when you rip your hand out, the singularity closes, and on your hand you have this uh, claw-like looking ring uh, that's in the shape of a fang. And you instantly realize that it has the power to cast a fifth level Me Moon Elf's Acid Arrow on a bonus action. Damn. Hey, damn. <clears throat> Hey guys, I solved the ghost puzzle. By sticking your hand in a hole and getting a a claw? Blah 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 I use minor illusion and I create a stick man that puts his hand in a hole and takes out a claw and then I shrug. And, uh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm... yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, around you now, uh, a mist starts to form again. And your friend, the go your ghostly friend. Oh, good God. Comes out. He's back. And you, can, and you can hear him. He's not, his mouth is not moving, but you can clearly hear him in his head in your head. Thank you for saving us. Please have these as we will now leave this earthly world onto the next. And from below the sands, you now see uh, three skeletons pop out, pop out of the ground. And uh, one of them holding two longer swords. The second one wielding a couple of bracers uh, on both its arms. And uh, the third one is having a very nice looking uh, headdress in the shape of a, uh, what's it called? Tiara? Circle? A Circle. Oh, circlet. Yeah. Um. Uh, with the small gem Ooh. on top of it. Like Sailor Moon. Like Sailor yeah. Moon. I'm interested in that one. Curious about that. I point upwards. All these yeah, we'll things. grab we'll grab them all. We'll grab them all and go to the surface. Ghostman. Oh, he's still As talking. He, I mean, the fog disappears. And he just bows and 
disappears into the fog, and with it, uh, the water becomes clear to you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go <laughs> grab the three skeletons, because they're probably light, and just pull all the skeletons up and uh, go start going to the surface out of the cave. And You want the bones? I mean, I don't want to touch all the stuff yet. But I mean, you could just take the stuff. Yeah, but what if they're cursed? But they oh, now you're worried about same. that. We can't. No, we can't. <laughs> I don't trust because we're. I don't we're trust ghosts. Still. <laughs> I, just, just fuck it. We'll speak when we get to the vote. I don't. I don't trust ghosts like that. Yeah. Um. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll. I'll grab the um skull. With the tiara thing on it, and snap it off, oh, and smart. take the whole skull up with me. Yeah, so I'll just take the arms off of the dude with the bracers, and then the arms off of the dude with the weapons. <laughs> dude, obviously defiling their bodies in their watery grave. <laughs> and, of course, of course, <laughs> and take them up to our boat. Well, as actually, as Oberon starts swimming, I just I grab onto his uh. Is a boot. Come on to his boot and he will carry me to the surface. <laughs> the 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 big que- creature that we fought, does it look delicious? It looks like I don't know, go ahead and roll me a is I don't know, survival check. A mighty seven. It looks very flabby. A lot of fat in this, in its tentacles. Um, I mean, it's not going anywhere, right? We can go back down and get it and chop it up if I want later. He is stuck talk here. on the boat. That's kind of my thinking. Yeah. 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 Cool. I put on my uh, water walking ring. So it activates, and then I do the Superman pose as I begin climbing upwards. Oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> I do that too. So, you come out of the water safely. Holy God, guys, did you see what the f- Oh God, I wanted to talk that whole time. I kept trying. <sighs> yeah, oh. the water? Everywhere. <laughs> Did you see I put my hand in that dark thing? I got a cool ring. Because I yeah. like putting my hand in things. There's a comment there, but I'm... Uh, I'm going to avoid it. Mostly treasure chests, but... Oh, of course. That's what I call them, too. I mean, the cost-like ones, so you know. But, okay, so let me check out these items you have. Can you identify them? Of course. Just on the boats. You Let's have around. Do we have a rope? You have identify? I uh do I? You're a rogue. That is not within your spell descriptions. No way I don't have to identify. <laughs> That's not within your class abilities. <laughs> I am an arcane trickster, I'm a certain no, um Oh maybe then. Yeah, I am an arcane trickster, but I don't have identify. Well, let's let's get up on the boat and we can figure out what they do. I mean, I'll do you just put them on because I touched. Are we going to figure out what they do if we don't have like you know an artificer or detect magic sort of thing, right? Uh, we <laughs> either take them back to port and get them identified, or wing yeah. it, <laughs> or wing it. Yeah, trial and error. <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> These are oh, obviously clearly. magical swords. Yeah, well, so um, you guys, you guys take care of that shit. Dibs on the tiara, and well, I'm going to tell you what it does. Sling my stuff. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up our snake guy for some food. I'll be back, and then I dive into the okay. water with uh, my axes out and my and my um, trident slung over my shoulder. I will put the tiara on, put the bracers on, and hold the swords. And <laughs> he's just a little fucking test. And I will, I will attune to all three of them in a short rest. Oh my god! 
Very well, we will get to them shortly. Sir, what did you say you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll get up to the ship uh, with these items, and I guess I will try and figure them out. Oh, did you want to <laughs> wear one? Give Wait, which ones did you take? Putting all three on. Okay, so then, then I'm not doing anything. Give me just one of the swords. Well, okay. I figured they were this. It was a pair of swords. Fine, take a do sword. Find out same. what it do does. Look like, a set? <laughs> like, do they increase they... the value together or? Uh, the, one of them is shaped like Chris. Uh, it's a. Both of them are long swords, but the blade of one of them is shaped like a Chris, so you know it's a Snake wavy shape. blade. Yes. Uh, the second one is a. It has a scimitar curve. On. Ooh, I want the scimitar one. Okay, Give you try me. the scimitar one. I'm gonna put yeah. these others on. Uh, but yeah. both of them are gonna brandish be... um, an emblem of both of them struck together, and there is a flame. Oh, I bet I know what they do. Uh, oh. Both of them. I bet if you touch them together. With the clang, it makes a big old fire wheel. Then give me both, then. Give me both. Oh, your funeral! <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, we could... We, 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 we'll see, we'll see. Let's see what happens. Give it to me, give it to me, and I'll try it. Right. And, I, and I'm sparring with the blades on the ship. No, no, don't do... Don't don't have... You gotta sit. You gotta think about them. You gotta put your mind but, into I mean, the magical weapons. You got to attune yeah, to the yeah, magical man. nature. You got to sit down to do it. Can't can't spar while you're attuned. You got to sit down. Fine. Yeah. I'll sit while, down in the tune. While you spar. two get that sorted. Over on, you swim down into the cave. Sorted. And you, and you have an opportunity to do what it is you wish to do down here. You'd better yeah, embrace yeah, um, yeah, so I swim down. I got my two axes out. And uh, start, you know, preparing the meat and bringing up big, fatty, delicious chunks of our uh, danger noodle. So the meat from the danger noodle has a lot of flap uh, just uh, just beneath the skin. But when you come down to it, there is a thick, very uh, solid, nice meat. Seems to be awesome. very gamey, I believe it, the term is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, from your expertise, you would know. Uh, you would see that. I'm just going to take big sort of circular dices of this thing and uh, pull them all up, including the skin and the meat and the, and the fat and everything. We can render it into oil. It's just useful. We'll sell the hell out of it. It'll be good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could pull, let's say you can come out with three very big chunks of its tentacles. They are. Sounds um, like a plan. On their thicker uh, parts, they are roughly uh, five feet in diameter. So you can. Delicious! Uh, so you could carry. If you tie one on your back, then you could carry up three big chunks of them. Sounds good. I'll just take the three, come upstairs, or come back up and. Uh... <laughs> climb back up in with it on my body. Give, give my two friends. Um... A uh, side, a little side eye at their dangerous shenanigans, and then I just retire to the galley. Let me know how that circlet goes, Joe. On it. I'm in the attunement pose. So I'm doing you go down yoga. Your kitchen. It takes some effort to get all of them down there, and it gets quite crowdy. Uh, and down there, but you start your process doing what it is you wish to do. And uh, as for the items, the two swords are, uh, all of the items are magical in nature. When struck together, um, both of them will ignite in flames, uh, making you dual wielding flame tongues. Uh, the flame blades, essentially, is what they become. And uh, they are the spell uh, flame blade made manifest at... Uh, what level the, the the level that you get them at so that is 2d6 on i believe 2d6 uh fire damage on hit plus of course your modifiers and whatnot um 
as for the circlet and the bracers, the bracers are uh, the kind of defense. So if you're not wielding any armor, it will increase armor or shield. It will increase your AC by two. All right. And this surface is a has a gem of um, it can see through magical illusions and uh, you can see circle of true sight exactly so it allows you to uh, yeah see through illusions and to some extent you can determine if something is shape shape shifted or not hey joe wait that's my name hey oberon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call from under uh, from uh, under deck. I think deck. you would prefer the braces because it lets you be naked but also defensive. It gives your manly muscles some some thicker bulk. I'm into it. All right, and then the the circlet it lets you see hidden things in the true form of them vile creatures who would deceive us. So, I mean, if you want that. I don't know. I feel like I feel like you're the one that needs the circlet with all of your trying to make sexy time with the... Uh, or no, wait, was that... That, was, that was the captain. <laughs> we'll give the captain the circlet. He sure loves his, uh, his water goblins. Water goblin <laughs> love! I won't None give him anymore. anymore. Now I'm a god of fire. <laughs> Yeah, and you're okay, gonna cool. be able to see the true form of all those gross fish things you're trying to bang. I mean, you know, it was good when it when it lasted. You know, it wasn't. Sometimes you it's just not to know. Get, get yeah, O'Brien, you you take these braces. I'm gonna pick my teeth with this finger thing. Okay, what does it do? What what is it? Oh, my finger lets me cast Melf's Acid Arrow. Okay, then. You know what that means? It's an arrow made of acid. Some dude named Melf. Uh, Magic. Uh, Now, uh. some dude made named... I don't know. We should should go to the island, because we wasted some time here, and we got to... We got a number crunch, and I need to get this job. We all yes. need to get this job, so let's go. Oh, bro, you can det- determine with all that food that you have, you do not need to restock at the reef. So you can just go. You have enough provisions to head for your final destination. Sweet. Um, I lay down on the deck and sun myself. Ah. <sighs> I mean, yes. I'm helping them sail the ship. <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead and roll me a con. Flat con. Uh, 21. 21. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, con. 20. Uh, tw- uh, 20. 20. Oh, 20. That... A spooky 20. A preternatural 20. Oh, I like that. Sp- spooky 20. Uh, so, you managed to catch a quite a nice tan after nice. a couple of hours. And it, does not, and it does not turn you into a cooked crayfish. So you My sexiness different. increases. I have it's a passive three. plus one charisma for the next five hours. It's for the next three days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Oh my god. Are oh, you for real? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just... Plus one to your charisma. Woot! And uh, yeah, Terry, you can determine that if you do not, if you skip the reef, you can get to the island in the morrow. Yes. You say it all awesome. day today. You would be there around noonish. Yes. The Lord of Fire needs not sleep. He will sail the waves at night. Is that your new name? Is that the, your new captain name? Yes. No. <laughs> For now, I mean, we'll see. Maybe one. Call day. me. Call me Metal Finger. Ooh. Yeah. I'm metal Finger. Yeah, it's yeah, got I a random cast vibe. 
I uh, so so uh, Tritrian sort of has his flaming blades out. I hope we run into some of those gnomes. We can take that fire thing from them, and I'll be fire captain. Yeah. So you go on your merry way. You leave uh, the Necklace Island, and the wind starts to catch up, catch up quite nice with you, and you're making good time. The night comes, and you have a very beautiful, calm night out on the ocean. Stars glistening everywhere, and the moon is shining bright. And you, so you have a good vision both of the ocean, and it just feels nice. Uh, does any one of you take shift steering the ship, or are you just gonna? Oh. Yeah, I'll 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 steer overnight because I have dark vision and we'll, we'll power through. You will of course be allowed to use the captain's stool, which the captain needs to stand on. Thank you. I I too am short and require a stool to steer the <laughs> boat. <laughs> yeah. So you you take shifts, and uh, it's just a clear open ocean for you and uh, it comes to morning i forgot the name oh. of the island we were going to you are going to the velvet strand velvet strand it's a huge sandbank that just goes for a couple of miles in the middle of the ocean but you have gotten have yourself a marker down. on the map so you could find oh thank god uh, a bit more exact where on the strand that you're supposed to go to. Yeah, we're finding the lady to deliver some things or pick up some things. Oh man, that was like so long ago and I was hit in the head a lot by crabs. Oh yeah, you were. Yeah, I was. So, uh, my good friend Oberon, you all wake up. Yeah, and would you go ahead? and uh, make you guys some nice and delicious food. Oh, delicious food time. A d20 plus your proficiency. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so with the thirteen, uh, go ahead and roll a d6. Four! Four, okay. So, uh, all of you can add four temporary hit points. And I'm guessing we've rested, so we're refreshing everything? Yes, everything has been refreshed. It's the next day. It's a new day. It's a beautiful day. Uh, yeah, I. You said we'd reach it today, right? We'd reach the Ruby Strand where we're heading to. Yes. yes. Cool. Cool. Um. So, any last conversations? Yeah. As. Do you guys think we'll get on the same ship when we get to join? Oh god, I fucking hope not. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> as long as I can cook, I'll be happy. God. <laughs> Although I do like using Joe to like, oh, I don't know, test all the dangerous things. Ah, uh, six days with you guys. That was just a nightmare. But he does seem to also enjoy throwing himself into danger, sticking his hand where they don't belong. Yeah, you gotta like claw on <laughs> <laughs> it has only been positive so far. Yeah, you've picked your teeth with it. I mean, I got other things, like these boots. That's true. And I have got this cloak. armor. Got cloak. Got finger thing. Got a bunch of money. I got weird, got to eat Oberon's weird squid food. Mm, delicious. It is good. Ooh, so, Mr. Joe, what? you want to roll me a perception. Oh, good God. 
that was a three. So let me add five. So eight. Eight. Well, this thing, you it takes some time, but eventually uh, you see a long line going across the horizon. And you can determine that within the within two hours' time, you will be reaching the Velvet Strand. Oh, we're gonna be there soon, guys! So, pack up your stuff, and, uh, I, and not really, because we're just going to drop slash pick up something, and then we gotta go back. Uh, but, we're here to talk to someone, a blind lady. Oh, yeah, that was... That's, that's right, right, that's right. I thought we had to pick up Mostly something. Mostly to deliver the chest. That's what it was! Yeah. Aha, you remembered. I just wanted to shoot stuff. Let's be honest, I yes, wasn't we're listening. Yes, Sarkia. All right, nice. Watery blue hair and no eyes. Very strange creature. Shouldn't be hard to find. Yeah, we'll That's find all. her. Yes. Everybody can go ahead and roll a perception. Eight. Fifteen! 15. Nineteen. Nineteen. Both you, uh, both Joe and Tritrian, you notice that next to you, about 80 feet away, a pale white ship with a white flag is sailing in the same direction as you, as you are, and is about oh, no. to come up to you broadside. Does it? Is there a fire on board? There is not. All right. Uh, punch it. We gotta go. We're almost to the Ruby Strand. We're like an hour yeah. away. If we can outrun this, we gotta go. We gotta. I believe go. there's a ship of the Salt Brigade, my friends. Right. That's why yep. we're running. Yep. It's deceptive because it's a white flag. You'd think they were surrendering, but if you look really yeah. closely, it's light gray, and that's different. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but are like are they following directly behind us? They are following directly behind you, attempting to right. come up broadside. But your ship does. Both of your ships are sloops, so they seem to be matching in speed. We gotta right. go. So I'm gonna run to the back of the ship, and I'm gonna give him the like finger, and then I'm gonna use shape water and create the giant two magical finger. finger. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the, the silent image, massive finger. <laughs> and then I'm going to create five foot cubes of ice in the water directly behind us. Nice. And I can create two, because then I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that they kind of get a bit of a Titanic situation with this, like a, bit, a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. So are you uh, making just solid cubes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they will attempt ooh, that's a nat one uh, they will ro sail straight into the cube and they're oh, let's see mm, yeah, appears I've just break broke the ice um, the <laughs> The front of their ship, it just seems to hit them just in the right way, so they lose a lot of momentum with that. Uh, getting this is my back shape with the water. additional. Uh, additional <laughs> this is exactly why you picked shape water, because I'm like, you could use that, yeah. Uh, it takes them about 20 feet of movement until they start to pick up speed again. And you are roughly. Um, let's say 200 feet now from being able to lay anchor and get onto the beach. Um, and and as they hit onto the to the ice cubes, I change the gigantic finger to sort of a toodaloo. <laughs> <laughs> I so I have a range of 600 feet with my longbow. I would like to try to snipe their captain. 
go ahead. With my ballista-like damage. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Roll. Joe is like if Legolas was an, uh, a goblin. Uh, does a 19 hit? <laughs> 19 hits. Does a 19 hit a gnome captain? <laughs> That's just a oh, that's not a ton of damage. It's a uh, eighteen. Damn the gnomes! But I can do a second shot if if he continues to pursue. Um. So how much damage did you take? Did that you was say? eighteen. Eighteen points of damage. So. The arrow flies straight into his arm, and he loses control uh, with the wheel for just a bit, screaming out in pain. And you wearing this gem of true seeing. Uh, that's on the captain. That's on the captain. Uh, all right, then. Yeah. Because so, he's going to bang more fish people, and he needs to know which one's real. That is true. Uh, Facts. Yes, he comes out of this shape and standing on top of the back of their ship now is a T-Rex looking creature with a sword for an arm and an eye patch. Oh god, we gotta, we gotta get on the boat. We gotta get on the shore. Holy crap. This is one thing I hate more than ghosts. Is dinosaurs with two, with swords for arms. But he seems to lose control <laughs> of the rudder, making the ship spin in a weird way. That as the two small other... arms. Yes. And it seems to be a lot back weighted now. And the ship starts to turn in a strange way. As it is losing even more distance from you. And the, you can see the other two crewmen running around a bit crazy on the ship now. Yeah. Uh, pull up to the dock as quickly as possible, and hopefully the, the port authorities will protect us. You get close to it, but there is no port. But on the other side of this yeah. bank, you see a ship. And standing underneath a parasol in the middle of it is a blue-haired woman. Oh, God. It's Sarkia! We oh, found her! Yay. How far away is she? Can we tell if she's blind? She is. She from, has no eyes. From the strand, she... Go ahead and roll up perception. Uh, unnatural 20? Unnatural 20. She does, in fact, have Blue hair, you cannot determine if she has, uh, if she is blind, but she is standing roughly 70 feet away from the shore. Uh, seem to be swirling something in her hand. All right, get the chest, let's go. <laughs> so, uh, you can see now that the ship behind you does not seem to regain any sort of control, and uh, Things are just getting worse and worse out there. Uh, the mast seems to be losing uh, its holdings. And it just flies off into the air. And you safely come to shore. You lay anchor. And it's up to you guys. What do you do? Uh... Uh, go, uh, uh, Joe will go over to the other lady, the, the blue haired lady ship. We're still being chased yeah. by the Slop Brigade. Are they still coming after us? We're kind of... No, their ship is spinning out of control uh, and they are just knocking over everything. So their mast has been, uh, the sail on their mast has been torn apart and is just now flying in the wind from the shark. Uh, the, Dinosaur tail, just knocking it down. Oberon, let's get the chest and get going. This is 
amateurs will take care of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and grab the chest, and then I want to use athletics to uh, leap onto the shore as close as I can to Sarkia. So you take a running jump and make an athletics check. With a six. Well, you... Oh. Wow. With a ten. A so bad roll. You take a running sprint, and you jump with the ch with the chest, not counting for its weight, and where your ship is actually being positioned, you land in the water in front of you. And it, it's not a superhero landing or anything, it's just a very clumsy oof that you land with, but you can straighten yourself back out. Cool. Pretty I keep easily. swimming towards Sarkia. And I wave, so. Lady Sarkia! I bring Titan Sun Rao! And you can just see she is holding up her hand next to her ear, just trying to determine where the sound is coming from. What is the rest of you, gentle, fine gentlemen, doing? I'm uh, jumping down. I, no, I put myself into the cannon and fire myself towards the shore. No, I jump off the ship. I do the heavy sword attack so I can fly and skim across. Then I also start going towards the blue-haired boy. I assume you do the same joke? Yeah, I'm going to leave it to our captain to talk, though, because I'm a goblin and people don't like me. <laughs> so, you come up to the woman. And what you can see her twirling around was indeed a keychain with a big key in it. Oh, hello. So you finally arrived. A bit early than I expected. But it's nice to know that you're on time. I cannot see, but I hope the chest has not been opened. Where is it? Right here, Lady Sarkia. And if we have uh, uh, arrived earlier than you were planning, would you please make a point of next time you see Rao, letting him know of our competence? We are trying to win his favor. Oh, I know why you're here. And I will absolutely do that. Good job, all of you. And my ship, how does it look? Is it still intact? How does her ship look? Yeah, I'd like to take a look at the ship. I guess investigate. Oh, the ship behind her, it... it it's a bit too far off for you to see. Okay, I see. Uh, the Gertie, how does my ship look? Oh, oh, I didn't realize the Gertie was your ship. Um, lady, oh. uh, it yeah. uh, it sails well. It is a little bit rickety looking, perhaps, but surprisingly hardy. She was rickety. given to us when she was a little bit on the thin side, but we've put some weight back into her bones. She looks healthier now. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. May I see the chest? I walk forward and, and put the chest in front of her. And she, you know, carefully stretches out her hand and eventually touches the chest. Oh. And she feels around it to see if any locks or nothing have been broken up or picked locked. The magical enchantments seem to be intact. We wouldn't dare. Oh. You've been smart and true to your word. So she, if there's she, one thing goblins are, it's true to their word. <laughs> Never mind. Lies! <laughs> I couldn't even finish the sentence. <laughs> goblin? Be honest, people. Oh, I sick. Not, Never mind. I did not know a goblin wanted to sail under Rao's banner. Well, I'm I am happy for it. Oh, thanks. It's been so long. I would like you to write a letter of recommendation if that is possible. Oh, I, I will so also... take my leave. <laughs> Also remember that everything they do well reflects well on me as the captain. Very important. <laughs> you seem to have led your party safe, Captain. I believe in 
their own initiative. You see, I rule with the style of command that allows them to grow on their own level. And he sort of creates this sort of bullshit middle management speech for himself. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> I roll my eyes. Roll a deception terror. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's not going to go 14. <laughs> and she critted. You are indeed full of shit. But fair enough. Oh. As, as she turns, puts in the key and turns it. It opens up. And inside it, she pulls out a, a wheel for a ship. I believe. And she... Huh sort of struggles to hold it up and stretches it out as far as she can. I, this belongs to you now. And so does the vessel behind me. She, <laughs> she is yours. Nice. What, what, what's her name? Oh. No one knows. She was built a couple of days. She was finished a couple of days ago. That's when I came to this place with her. Well, oh, wait. So, name. so like, this whole mission was just kind of to see if we were trustworthy to not open a box? <laughs> you tried many things on your way here. Oh. We can now trust that you do not disobey command. Now you're on time. You follow orders. You seem to take good care of yourselves. The chef seemed to be doing a good job since I cannot hear any of one of you vomiting or seem sick. <laughs> yeah. I chuckle. <laughs> so we oh. exemplary work. All I right, did. I guess we get a boat. <laughs> we fought. Can we please name the terrible. boat the danger noodle? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we thought you things were it... terrible to look at, but they were delicious. Oh. Some of the most horrifying things are often the most tasty. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, uh, thank you, ma'am. I very much appreciate your candidness with the wheel that you are giving us. Do you need a ride off yeah, here? that's what I was thinking. Oh, no, no. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Do you want our old boat? Yeah, but the Gertie, the Gertie, how does it get home? I will sail it. Oh. Alone? Oh. Blind? Don't you worry about that. I've sailed her many times. As I did with the vessel behind me. Oh, okay. I have expected. Don't worry, Grandma can drive on her own. Oh, okay. She does not look too old, but middle age ish. Thank you, ma'am. If we ever cross paths again, which you won't know because you can't see, I will I be sure. Smell. Oh, God. Well, then, if you do smell this, <laughs> smell <laughs> you later. If you smell this. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Take care now, all of you. And yes, there was one more thing. If you were to come here on time, Raul wished to extend the congratulations and welcome to the Ocean's Blunder. And, oh shit, I got uh, you. Yeah, I almost forgot. And in, in the chest, there is another thing. And when you look down... I lean over and take a look. You can see... Uh, the flag of the oh. Blunder. We are nice. official, boys! I pick it up and let it flap in the air, laughing. <laughs> We're in! We did it, guys! Yeah! He and said he wanted... over a raptor with a sword. He's... Yeah, and also he wished to ask you to come to see him at least within the fortnight, so... Ding, ding. At least two weeks' time. He wants you to be back at Blonder's Bay. Fantastic. Take care now. Bye! Strolls back. 
towards the gurney. I'm just waiting for her to trip. I'm just watching yeah. her waiting for her to trip uh, on them. As she walks away, when she's without a like, earshot, I'm like, we're going to need to find some new food for the ship. Because I don't feel like we could take that food from her. She's sailing alone. She's not going to eat much. True. True, but... I mean... I'm blind. It's fine. We got Oberon. We'll... Um, well I mean, let's look on the with it. Yeah, we'll deal, we'll deal with that. Yeah. Later. We got a ship, guys. So I, I, tell, I tell her, um, you know, lady, we uh, have... Uh, a, a fully stocked galley. Um, would you mind if I take one piece of the sea monster we took so that I can continue to uh, oh, study and, and test and taste? Oberon, Oberon. That, that gold we hit under the floorboard. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to go get that. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's why I'm oh, going back. <laughs> uh, oh, if, if you have things, I will stay here for a little while so you can unload your whatever it is you wish to take with you. But please, save something for me. Since I haven't eaten in quite some time, except for these. And she opens up her palm, and inside of holding it, in her palm there are a couple of berries that seem to have appeared out of nowhere. They look good. Those look like good berries, yeah. They look very good. (laughs) You know it was coming. I did. I was going to make it. (laughs) Lady Sarkia, would you like to join us on the Gertie for one final meal? I'd be happy to cook for you. You know what? I would actually love that. I'm just gonna hmm. take care of one thing first. As I heard some commotion while you were coming in. Are we talking about the T-Rex with the hook on, sword <laughs> arm and the you know boat of salt? Yeah! The sword Rex. Salty yeah, sword, sword Rex. Very troubling. Oh, so that's what it was. Yes, I, I can... I will Two get rid of that. And cool, she, thank you. She will walk up to the shore and put one of her hands down into the water. And you now see a huge wave forming a several hundred feet out from uh, behind the gurdy as a tsunami wave comes crashing down. Oh god, she's a witch! Damn! Would you like a job on my ship? Oh no, I got <laughs> I, I got my own. Don't worry. Oh no, I mean I'll if be you're fine. ever oh, wait, okay. on, I mean if you ever want a job. Cause I don't want any witches on our boat. No shh. There's shh. one you thing I cannon. There's one thing I don't like more than ghosts and dinosaurs with sword arms. It's witches. But look at look at what she did. She killed that boat with with the with the Tyrannosaurus blades. With like witch did. magic. Yeah, but she can fly. A sh- she can. Fly right, we're she can we're gonna it. have dinner. We're gonna have dinner with her. We'll be nice. We'll Otherwise, she turn you into that. a frog. And keep your mouth shut. She'll kill you. No, she seems she, fine. She's a witch. <laughs> we found a witch. May we burn her? So. You all unload what is left on your ship and carry it over the bank. Um, a feast, I assume, will ensue oh, in your on celebration. The, most definitely. On the so, beach. Shaka, yeah. go ahead and roll me one last dice roll. <laughs> so fitting. You were muted, my friend. Crit dinner, baby. Yes. So you prepare the most delicious banquet. All the crab and giant tentacles and whatever you can find. And you make a huge, I don't know, do you have any preference? It's a, deli- it's a delicious or... It's a delicious fr- uh, sp- spread of fried fish using the dis- using using the oil from all the fat. To make an incredibly delicious bunch of crackle and fishy goodness. Very nice. And so you eat and you feast. And she, at some time of the night, she 
remarks that one of her bottles seems to be empty from what she had hidden underneath the floorboards. Clever of you to find it. Yeah. But, but you still have this one. So she will pick out the final bottle of rum. And you could... She pours up some for each and one of you. Every one of you. It goes into the late afternoon. And you part ways. She goes back to her ship. And it seems to be catching a wave seemingly out of nowhere. As it, it's almost being carried on the waves themselves. So it's magic. magic. She hasn't even let down the uh, um, the sails. It just goes off in the direction you came from. Woo. Any that parting was... words, Woo-woo. my friends, as we are coming to the close of the campaign? Part of me when I go, where's my familiar? I haven't seen it in days. No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Let's see where the waves take us, guys, because uh, this is going to get even more interesting once we get more important work than transporting wheels. I forgot to ask for a transfer. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck with us for now, my ah! friend. And the wheel that you got was the steering wheel for the ship. Why would you transport the steering wheel separately? It was all a no. test of Rao, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Don't question Rao's orders. So. All right. Okay. Don't make me make. Don't make me make you run behind the damn uh, ship, talking smack about our leader. <laughs> exactly. Damn, Joe. So, Have some so I can respect. So I presume on that, that was the ballad of the scuffed Gertie. <laughs> Indeed, it was. <laughs> Woo! That was Thank amazing. you so much for playing, guys. Thank I you. Like- Have some fun with this. That was a lot yes. of fun. Yes. That was a yeah, it was a really fun campaign. Good job. Thank uh, you very much. As always, oh, yeah. I will f- close us out with follows, and then we'll say farewell to our good friend Shaka. Uh, we have CMWH Zombie, who followed, I think sometime during the week. We appreciate you. We have Witchbolt. Thank you. And also, thanks for joining the Discord. We'll talk to you a lot about D&D if not me, because I don't do stuff on the Discord, but the other people will do it. Uh, <laughs> we have Spoon Man. Spoon Man, thanks for the follow. There was a bunch of other numbers and letters in there, but I didn't write all those down. It was Spoon Man. Then we have the Elder Wolf. Thank you, Elder Wolf. Uh, uh, please get all of your younger wolves to come and follow as well. And then this last one kind of threw me off. I think it's Lad King, but it's L4D. But I'm going to go with Lad King 12. Thanks, Lad King. We appreciate all your follow, all of your follows and your friendship and your host. Also, we had multiple people host us. Our usual cadre of hosts with uh, Dan, Elantros, uh, Vic. So many. I didn't write those down. Sorry. And But thank you anyway. Yeah, thanks anyway. Thanks all you guys and for then, hosting us. And then thank you, Shaka, for your yes. time with us hey, my pleasure. on this journey. We and hope you're you, awesome character. We thank hope you, you got sir. a <laughs> we hope you got a taste for the D and D vibe. Oh show. Sure. For sure. And uh you can find us on Twitter. Uh yeah, the the link YouTube. will be linked. You can find us on YouTube, join our Discord. We're pretty active on it. Um, uh, next week, our new pod, our new episode of our podcast is coming out. Check that out on. Uh, we can find it on our Twitter. It's on Podbean. And uh, Shaka, you have closing things to say. I will let you do that. Shaka, you're a professional. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can find me on mixer.com forward slash Shaka Panda. I'm Shaka Panda on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then on YouTube and Facebook, Shaka Panda Plays. And of course, you can go to shakapanda.com to find all of that and more. And even check out our podcast about content creation on shakaandpals.com. Awesome. Nice. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to this. It's been a blast. And a special thanks to you, Sh- Shaka, for joining this rowdy crew. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, good times, good times. 
Salty good times, indeed. <laughs> Take care, guys, and we'll see you next week with a brand new We'll campaign. see. We'll see something next week. Well. <laughs>